The Iranian delegates allowed NBC to fly into Geneva with them on their private jet. It was clear that a great deal was riding on this round. Foreign Minister Zarif saw the window of opportunity closing. There can be an agreement this week if they start negotiating in good faith. There was no room for another falling out. Secretary Kerry said that right up to the last minute, he felt the whole thing could have blown up. It could have. There was so much tension. It could have. It could have. And we, we were uh, in, in a very delicate situation. We had very firm uh, grounds that we needed to maintain. In round three in Geneva, there was a clear sense that time was running out because of the threat of new sanctions by Congress. What kind of tension was there to get this thing done? There was a sense of importance to try to finish it because of the political pressures that could explode on either side from people who were opposed but didn't really know the detail or know the, the substance. Leading into the third round, you made a YouTube video in English. Yeah. What was your thinking? Well, it was a suggestion by one of my uh, young friends who said that you may want to present your case. Uh, I thought I, I, I did in, in, in many TV interviews, uh, but he told me, uh, and I'm grateful to him, because I try to stay up to date with, with technology, but, but, I, but I can't. I mean, it's simply a, a generational gap sort of that has happened. But it caught a lot of attention. It did, and, and I, I didn't expect it, but this was uh, probably something that uh, gave a very personal uh, touch uh, to a political message. I thought there had been a lot of misinformation, uh, and somebody needed to make a case for it out. Iranians are no different from any other people on this planet we share. We expect and demand respect. John the Kerry had his substance. share of worries. But you couldn't go out and tell people the substance until you had it done. So you were in this sort of trap in a sense of uh, wanting to close because people were opposing it by basis of rumor or principle or just political opposition. And if that grew to a crescendo, you could get stopped before you started. So that created obviously its own pressure point and I think it, in the end it was helpful because it, it sort of you know created an energy to recognize we gotta we gotta close the loop here while we can. The good humor that Zarif showed at the start of round two had evaporated going into these sessions. My greatest concern is how to uh, build uh, what was destroyed last time uh, and that requires a lot of work. It requires a lot of work for us to be able to, uh, to patch up because it wasn't a very positive experience last time. The process of finding language acceptable to all sides can only be described as tedious. What level of uranium enrichment is acceptable? What sanctions could be loosened? What was again going to be a two-day meeting dragged into a third day. The window of opportunity seemed to be closing, but nobody was ready to throw in the towel just yet. President Obama once again sent in Secretary Kerry to try to close the deal. Last round, he had told Kerry not to be in a hurry. Not so now. Obama would stay on the phone with the negotiators from the Oval Office. There, helping him try to find the acceptable language for a deal, advisors Tony Blinken and Ben Rhodes. Each capital needed to sign off on language crafted ever so carefully. Each step ahead, a cause for celebration. Negotiations went into the night. Zarif had only gotten an hour of sleep the previous night. Still, there was practically no chance there would be another round of negotiations. Leading right up to my last meeting with Foreign Minister Zarif, there was a possibility it was going to crash. I think by 11 o'clock at night, uh, the enrichment text was uh, clear, and I, I was happy with the enrichment text. Uh, there was a sentence the secretary wanted on, on concerns, uh, and I couldn't accept the wording that he had said. Foreign Minister Zarif was about to depart because 
there was pushback coming from Tehran. And I think that was a point where he and I met one last time without any clarity to whether or not we could break through. And uh, I think three o'clock in the morning, I've made the suggestion and it worked. And so but that, that's how I, I, I perceive it. Maybe Secretary Kerry sees it another way. It's entirely possible. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what happens in negotiations. So it really was, you know, uh, not until the last moment that there was absolute clarity we were going to get this thing. Exactly what was said in that one last conversation has so far stayed with the two of them. What prevented it from blowing up? Probably some foresight. I don't want to be congratulatory to myself or to Secretary Kerry, but at the end of the day, we decided to accept uh, the outcome, that this was the best that could be achieved. Both of you get taking less than what you wanted? In any negotiations, you get less than what you want. Otherwise, the other side will not be happy. I knew that this time, I will have uh, people who would uh, criticize me. And I knew that since they were skeptical of the United States, if I agree with them, they'll become skeptical of me. But I thought it was necessary, um, and I took the risk, and the president took the risk. At four o'clock in the morning, the diplomats proceeded to the United Nations headquarters to sign what would be a six-month first stage agreement. It seems unlikely that this kind of breakthrough could have happened without these two men, who seem to have lifted the blinders on ideology to come to a mutual understanding. But the way the world had first found out there was a deal an hour earlier was with what else? A tweet from Javad Zarif. We have reached an agreement. I called him and I said, we have a deal, and he asked a couple of questions and he said... We caught up with the foreign minister at 5 a.m. He had been on the phone with President Rouhani. Does he seem pleased? By uh, he, he's a difficult man to be pleased, but, but he was okay. At least he wasn't... <laughs> he was okay. At least he wasn't shouting. It was almost 11 p.m. on Saturday when President Obama walked before cameras to address the nation. Today, that diplomacy opened up a new path toward a world that is more secure. If there was any question about whether we had moved into an age of Twitter diplomacy, consider the post that followed immediately. Agreement in Geneva. First step makes world safer. More work now. JK. Kerry's tweet was retweeted by Iranian President Rouhani, who then tweeted himself. The success of negotiations is indicative of the will of Iran and the West to develop a constructive cooperation. The very next day, Iran posted President Rouhani's music video on YouTube for the world to see.